There's no doubt that Google, uh, among others like Yahoo and MSN Search, are among the world's largest search engines. But is there another rival on the horizon? We've got Matthew Ingram on the line from GlobeTechnology.com. Thanks for joining us, Matthew. Thanks for having me, Mike. So uh, when I think of search, uh, I typically think of Google, and that's almost uh, it's it's a word in the dictionary, dictionary now. You know, you Google something on the internet. But yeah. um, I, I hear that there might be another competitor coming up the the ranks. Well, I think we we keep hearing about sort of Google killers, you know, in, in the wings, uh, new companies that are trying to do something different with search, just because Google is so huge um, and so, so much a part of that market. I think we're always looking for who's the next Google or who can, you know, who can compete with Google. And, and one of the names that's come up is a company called PowerSet. Uh, it's a startup. There's very little known about it. Um, a couple of senior Yahoo uh, people are involved, and it's gotten, um, I think, one round of funding of about $12 million, and it sounds like it's probably going to do another round of uh, venture capital. And its uh, secret, I guess, if you want to call it that, is what's called natural language search, which is actually something that search um, experts have been trying to, to sort of grapple with for a decade or more. Um, how, how to make it easy to search using terms, uh, using phrases that you would normally use in speaking, for example. When you go to Google, um, typically, people just type in keywords. You don't type in and or to or 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 with because Google ignores them. So Google effectively just takes whatever the keywords are. If you're searching for um, books by children or books about children, Google ignores those smaller words and just looks for books and children. And then it gives you the top ranked searches for that. Um, PowerSet is one of the companies that's looking at trying to distinguish between those different phrases. So if you're looking for books about children, that's different than looking for books by children. So they're trying to use fairly sophisticated algorithms to, to take those terms and phrases and make it easier for you to just type in, you know, I'm looking for a book about X and have it actually narrow it down to, to something more specific. Well, it's interesting. Um, I, I also read uh, something about this. Uh, it's a, a spin-off from the, uh, the Xerox uh, Palo Alto Research Center. Right. They, uh, they actually licensed some natural language search technology that Xerox had been developing at PARC. Um, and I don't know if you know the history. You probably do the history of PARC, the Palo Alto Research Center, um, developed most of the things that we now associate with computers, um, pull-down menus, the whole sort of graphical user interface, the desktop metaphor, uh, folders, the trash bin, all those things. It developed the mouse, uh, for example, and those basically made their way into um, daily use. Um, Xerox has developed a whole ton of technologies like that, and one of the things they've been doing over the last little while is trying to make money from them by licensing them. So PowerSet used some of the money it raised to license natural language search technology um, and the only sort of question now is whether, the, the big question mark is, is it going to be as sort of as much of a game changer as as PowerSet wants it to be, or is it just going to sort of, you know, improve search but not really that much? Well, uh, it, it is interesting, and, and you know, with business and technology for that matter, uh, you know, competitors never really stand still, do they? I mean, uh, if uh, Google and Yahoo, for example, see that uh, they're they're studying this natural language method, I'm sure they've got something in the works as well. Right, and they've definitely been looking at natural language search. It's not like, you know, people just thought of it. it. It has been around for decades, and it's a very, very difficult thing to do. It's, it's in fact, a lot easier to describe than it is to do. Um, and so this is something that engineers have been working on for, for years and, and haven't really been able to, to make it work as, as consistently as, as they would like to. Well, hopefully uh, we'll see some of those benefits uh, soon, but it might be a few years, I guess. I think so. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Matthew. Okay, thanks, Mike. That was Matthew Ingram from globetechnology.com.